All right, a very preemptive Matt four for four. Why are we late? We're late on this episode. Oh, uh, because we did a really great interview with Charlotte Renegade of the Renegade Twins that you can check out here. Got it. That's all I got. <laughs> okay. Welcome back to another episode of the Face for Wrestling video podcast. I'm Waldo. I'm the Matt. I'm Dr. The Wife. And in episode 26, we're back at Shinkiba First Ring on February 9th with a reported attendance of 205. It's a five-match card that has two singles matches, two six-lady tag matches, and a tag match. Things looking to be shaping up as this card has a lot of storytelling in it. The twins of Hina and Rina take on Kaori and Monster in the opening tag match of the night. Yeah, we shoot back to the stars locker room where we have Rina saying we're at Shinkiba facing Yoni Yamasan and Ruraka of Jan. We fought them before and we lost. Well, today we want to win and get that three count. Let's do it. Oh, we then shoot over to jungle locker room. I don't know. Why I'm going to speak like <laughs> William Shatner all of a sudden where we get the typical jungle intros as well as Ruraka saying today we face Hina and Rina for the second time. We won last time, so I think we'll win again. Then, a Leo standing in the background holding up some merch. I have that in my notes right here. A wild yeah. Leo appears. Uh, after a long absence. Should we do a little words alert? <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a Leo, though, so we gotta, we gotta do a we got to do a lion roar. Yeah, so Leo is saying... Where's my note? After a long absence, I will do my best to support these guys as ring second. Kaori then says, oh, let's go jungle jungle. So right after all the wrestlers are introduced, we get told that today is race car ref's birthday. We do. Hold on a second. Race car ref is back. And he's got a name. Oh yeah. We've known his name, but uh, for us, it's race car. Ref. They actually use his name. And I was <laughs> like, that's cool. Um, but yeah, however, I feel like there's going to be some shenanigans. They announced his birthday during a Kaori match. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and they brought back the side-mounted camera, too. It was weird, though. They didn't yeah. use it during the match. It was just a weird... I'm okay with that. Same. It yeah. was just like weirdly, here's a weird angle for entrances for some reason. Handshakes to start this off, and Hina and Monster start the match off. Weird. No shenanigans during the handshake. None. The two start off with wrist watches and headlock exchanges until Monster breaks out of hers for a round of applause standoff and tag out for Kaori and Rina. Rina challenges for a test of strength. The Kaori is too short, and before Kaori can stomp Hina's foot, she moves it out of the way and stomp hers instead. Yeah, I like this. Oh, this is good. They're really showing that Rena's come along, or like she's coming along nicely. Yeah, because uh, I think she got her with that last time they had the match. A double team drop kick from the twins to Kaori, and they start giving her the business with the feet and holding off Monster from the tag. Mm -hmm. Kaori does some arguing with race car ref, and as Hina is in the corner, Kaori tosses race car ref in the mix as well shenanigans welcome back indeed race car ref happy birthday big stomp to the chest for monster to hina in the middle of the ring but it can't get the three as hina tags in rena gets in a nice flying drop kick to monster kaori does her flying backdrop and misses to connect to rena but man did she hit hard on the mat on this one yeah she went full force uh, double r bars number three and number 76 to kaori after receiving clavicle chops from her Mm -hmm. But after a little interference, Kiori finally connects with her flying backdrop again and gets the three in 522. I had a weird note on this one, and we won't go too far into it, but I had the note that Hina really needs to work on her punches. And then I was like, wait, Kiori's punches aren't very good either. And then I was like, wait, they're punching in this match. I thought they weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, that's it. That's my only note. Uh, decent opener. Uh, you could definitely tell that in the Ruraka Arena start off of the match, it was very obvious that, you know, they're new. Um, but it, nothing offensive. Decent opener. Yeah. 
I agree. I <laughs> so I'm trying not to foretell the future here, but um, I actually enjoyed watching uh, Yama work. I I like this bubbly Yama though. Let me, let me leave it at that. She's bubbly, but she's still evil. Like she's no, still, she's not though. She beat up the rev. <laughs> she she beat. That's up not kids. evil. <laughs> That's not evil. She's Beating assertive. Beating up kids isn't evil. She's assertive. You heard it here, folks. Can we get that quote, like the quote format of Yama me? is Beating up assertive. kids is not evil, Dr. Lord. I didn't say that. I never said that. I said Yama's just <laughs> assertive. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Rounding out the appearance of all the sisters in this show, it's our first singles match of the night with Hanan going up against Bobby. Yeah, we continue on the TCS weird promos. I, I'm a fan, but they're weird. Uh, we see a door, and we hear some knocking on it from the other side. And then Bobby lets herself in, so I don't know why she knocked. Last time we had phones, now we have them knocking and entering people's houses. You know, but at least they're by themselves in the promo. I'm okay with that. Yes. Like, I'm not mad. It's weird. It was just weird. I'm okay with weird. Yeah. Uh, she walks in, uh, says, oh, hello, back in Shikiba. It's very cold, and I can't think of a better way to warm up than kicking Hanan in the face. Thank you. Bye. And then walks out the door. That's it. Simple to the point, but weird, but different. So good. And then uh, we shoot over to Hanan, who says, uh, we're at Shinkiba, and it's my first singles match with Bobby. I'm not sure how it will go, but I know I want to win. I'll do my best. While she did keep the promo short, at least it wasn't over the phone this time. So kudos. And there was nobody talking over each other in my... Also, I, okay with it. Bobby's theme sounds like somebody thumping on the mic for a sound check. See, I like her theme song. I don't think it necessarily fits because it keeps going, yeah, Miss yeah, Jackson, yeah. Miss Jackson. Hold on, though. Hold on, though. At least it fits with the mood. It fits the mood. It, it has a nice cadence for walking out to. Yeah. Her name just isn't Miss Jackson, so I don't know why I keep yelling Miss Jackson. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! laughs> uh, do, we, do we get to point out that it's, once again, a Panic at the Disco remix by some guy named Wolf? Bring. Straight into a collar and elbow lockup with Bobby using her notes from Hana on how to work the crowd here. And race car ref out for another match, making up for all the time that we missed him. Standoff after Hanan manages to get out of Bobby's headlock. As Hanan tries for a test of strength, Bobby has none of it and goes straight for the attack. Bobby makes it very clear that she is working the arms of Hanan and is also taking her time for everyone to take it in. Hanan does manage to get in a little bit of offense. Topped off with flying drop kicks in the corner and a flurry of elbows and screaming. But Bobby shuts it down by overpowering her with a snapmare and Japanese insults. Yes, I yeah. looked that up. Yeah. Fool. She was yelling fool at her over and over again. What was what? Which was what? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> but I just remember that I... I Insert here. I Googled it, and <laughs> she was yelling fool at her. Which was working off into the fact that she kept going for the, the judo toss. Yeah. And Bobby kept denying the judo toss. Which is followed up with a nice set of four judo flips from Hanan to Bobby. Who, Fol yeah, like Hanan like hulked out here. Can we, can we say hulked out? She powered up. Super Saiyan, uh, beast. beast mode, <laughs> beast mode. There you did go. There. Uh, and started actually like like the screams were just like ah, ah and oh, started throwing let's not call her it everywhere. Beast mode. It's Followed by a rolling thingamajigger into an the upside down headlock thingy. <laughs> but Bobby makes it to the ropes. The, I don't know what was going on. The here. inverted it was an inverted STF, but she didn't lock the legs like you do in an STF. But as far as I can tell, it was an inverted STF. Bobby catches Hanan as she's coming off the ropes with her jump off the ropes DDT. The rope assisted reverse STO. And I pointed it out this time because I think this is the best one she's done so I, far. I have it right here. Even though it looks a little bit different, this is this is it. Yeah. Do this from now on. It, it almost seems like she didn't catch the ropes how she wanted to and had to adjust, but it looked great. Hanan took it great. Like, I'm with you. Do it this way from now on. Bobby kicks out of a sneaky schoolgirl, but Hanan quickly follows with an attempted arm bar number 54. By the time Hanan gets it on all the way, Bobby makes it to the ropes. A series of kicks to Hanan from Bobby, and that's enough to get the three in 6.34. Yeah, we had like the little super kick into a bicycle kick. Seemed kind of the quick, super, I like the super kick. The bicycle kick. Uh, yeah, it was a little in, weird on the ending. I had the no... No, I don't have any... I, I, I thought it was a little weird. We've both said, I think in the last one, we've enjoyed the TCS pairing and how they've come along. So the fact that they had Bobby out there completely by herself with no interaction to Hana was a bit weird, but they allowed her to go out there and actually work a heel match solo, get a win in, which is something TCS has needed. So like no complaints. 
I do have it right here. It was great to see Bobby in a singles match. Mm. Her progression to stardom kind of reminds me of Hana's in our timeline. Yeah. Worked out the exact same. Started off in the tag team. With, well, just uh, even that, like, she's she's gotten so much better from, I mean, you can go back and watch our episodes from when she debuted. She's gotten so much better so quickly. And you could tell that her pairing with Hana, she's been taking notes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with that. She she has gotten better. This this fight was a good example of, of her getting better at it. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, weirdly, my only complaint is she shook Hanan's hand before the match. And it's like, you're a heel. Don't shake their hand. Like, if that's what I'm complaining about, you done good in the match. I'm actually surprised you didn't bring up anything about the suspenders. The, uh, the one of them, like, broke or something, right? Yeah, and they bo- yeah the main one. I think she did good because, like, she at the end, she got all angry and, like, popped the other one off. Like, uh, oh, I'm yeah, just glad so it wasn't, like, the boots. Yeah, like, yeah. The furry boots. No, I... I straps break i'm not gonna yeah. be mad at that like uh the furry boots annoy me because you've chosen to wear the boots you yeah. know what i mean it's which our... i have to say like we'll get to it later but i don't think they were very bad in this match she's she's got some good furry boots no, we'll get there yeah it's our first six lady tag match of the night and we have jan of jungle natsuko and gorilla facing off against the stars of kid alex and saki Speaking of face-off, did you know that Face for Wrestling has a weekly face-off with Waldo and Matt where we stream games? We also have Shameless Plugs. Go check it out. Shameless yeah. Plugs. No, I am not a part of that. That is just the guys. They enjoy their matchup. I just stay in the background for that. That's true. You've only ever had like one heads-up thing when it comes to Face for Wrestling, and that's when you had your head up as we smashed an egg on it because you lost at Mission oh. Prediction. Which we have another one of those coming up. Check those videos out here. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we shoot back to the jungle locker room where we get the jungle intros. And jungle saying, Today we are in Shinkiba. We're facing stars today, but we have something to say, right, Natsuko? Natsuko says, Today's stars are missing Mayu and Tam. They're not here at all. Saki, Starlight, and Alex, it's just not enough. You're missing people. It's not enough to hang. The people that we would take seriously aren't even here. Stars are basically nothing without Mayu. We'll prove that when we beat them. Well, it'll still be fun, though. Jungle says, we're going to flatten Saki even more. Let's go, Jungle Jungle. Holy crap, they are being so mean to Stars here for no reason. I thought everybody was face, 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 face. Was that six in this match? We're all face until someone gets hurt. We then shoot over to the Aggies locker room. There you go. Uh, or the stars, as we know it here. And we have Alex busting out a little poetry. She says we have a little message for our opponents. Twinkle, twinkle, we are the stars. Obviously, you know who we are. Everything we do, we shine so bright. So better watch your backs, because we've come to fight. Okay. I liked it. It's my kind of poetry. It's kind of cheesy, kind of dumb, but I'm a fan. Starlight no sells it all. It says, today we face Jan, and it's my first time to face Saya, so it should be fun. What do you think, Saki? Well, she probably had no idea what she was no saying. Yeah, no yeah, clue. but still, it was funny the way it was just like... Yeah, yeah. it worked out perfectly. <laughs> you, it yeah. kind of looked like she was just waiting for Alex's lips to stop moving. Yeah. Because I don't then know. She could say I, the thing I, I had she the was sneaking suspicion say. that Starlight knows more English than us, and she did understand and just ignored it. That's also possible. Yeah, um, I would have too. But, I mean, Alex gets her revenge because she has no idea what's going on next, so that worked out. Starlight says, today we face Jan, and it's my first time to face Saya, so it should be fun. What do you think, Saki? Saki says, I think Jan has a combined weight of 500 kilograms. Yeah. What was up with that? It's because they do the move where they squash people. No, yeah. wait a minute. That's no, what it is. But that's, there's, a double, there's a double sentiment there, though. I was I, I get where you're coming from, but I think that's what it is because they lead up to it in their other stuff. But it still, it still leads into Waldo's view of Saki. Terrible. Terrible, Terrible and she's like picking on people. Betrayer. I looked it up for us American people, by the way. Uh, 500 kilograms is uh, roughly 1,100 pounds. That's, That's a lot done. of pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she then says, Last time I was crushed by that 500 kilograms plus Yoniami san's weight. You see, there you go. That's what they're talking about. The, 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 the <sighs> what do you, I don't know what you would call it. The jungle, I call it the backpack splash. There we go. The jungle backpack splash. Yeah. Um, Starlight says, let's be careful today. Saki says, no matter what, try not to get crushed. Even without Mayu, Tam, and Arissa, we have to do good today. Starlight says, let's work hard to make stars shine. Let's go. 
Also, on that note, because like I can see where you're coming from. Like she's picking on him about her weight, <laughs> but they always pick on her about her weight. Like it's like, she's the a pink, pink string bean. Yeah. And, like, but she accepted that moniker, didn't? She? Eventually, did she? Not at first. She eventually did and made merch. Oh, really? Which you can see here. So, question for you, Matt. <laughs> what was Natsuko laughing about here? When the promo first started. I don't know. There was a weird cut. Yeah, it, it was a very Oidotai. They did the jungle <laughs> intros, and then it had a weird little cut, and then went into jungle speaking. Also, Natsuko mentions that Mayu isn't here tonight. Interesting. I wonder if we'll ever figure out why. We start off with Kid and Gorilla and Old Ref to give Race Car Ref a slight birthday break. Well, before we started, too, Saya popped her hand up quick, saying she wanted to start the match. Uh jungle and natsuko agreed and they showed that they agreed by chopping the shit out of her back for some reason i was like as someone who's taking a chop now why would why why why, why? why? collar and elbow lock up into trading wrist watches and headlocks until gorilla manages to shoot kid to the ropes kid comes bolting back with the drop kick to gorilla that she easily knocks out of the way as gorilla is looking to pick kid up by the head kid lays in a kick to gorilla's head from the mat and does a backwards kip up to tilt a world gorilla down. Yeah. Words. <laughs> Followed by a jumping kick to gorilla just outside the corner. Wrestling. Then kid clears the Jan corner and goes back to jungle. Strong power slam from kid to gorilla. Hey, well done. Yeah. And she tags out to Alex who tries for a quick pin. But gorilla just kicks her and puts up a little struggle and Alex has had enough. She tags in Saki who does a strong power slam as well. Followed by some stiff looking boots. Gorilla tries to mount a comeback with some elbows to Saki, but it doesn't exactly work out. But as Gorilla was coming back from an Irish whip, she starts up the directional drop kicks. It doesn't really go anywhere until she finally lands a stronger one and immediately tags out to Jungle. Jungle clears house, and Natsuko comes in to start the Tower of Power for Jungle. Tower of Power. So we're going from backpack splash to the Tower of Power? Yeah. Old Ref clears the mess up a little bit, and this allows Saki to get a bit of offense on Jungle. But after a snap suplex and only getting a two, she tags out to Alex. Alex starts off strong with a drop kick and snap mare. I'm I'm called this a snap mare. I don't think this is right. I don't know which part exactly you're talking about. But Jungle quickly turns that around by just muscling Alex across the ring to the bottom rope for a clothesline and splash from the outside ring apron. Yeah. Natsuko comes in and quickly misses a sweeping kick for the head and then starts slapping the mess out of Alex. Alex ducks the last one and runs to the other side of the ring to springboard a body splash. Well done, Alex. Yep. But as her pin attempt only gets a two, Kid and Saki try to run interference for Alex to go up top. Natsuko moves out of the way, and a mess follows that ends with Kid doing a standing moonsault to jungle in Natsuko in the middle of the ring. Oh, the they did the double six one nines. No, no, like... no. They did the double nine seven nines. Sorry, the double nine seven nines. There was something weird in there, but I don't remember what it was. I know what you're talking about with the mess. Alex absolutely nails her shiny wizard here. This thing was shiny. The shiny wizard was a nice pickup after after the weirdness. There ain't no dullness in this one. As she got all of yeah. it. Probably one of her best ones we've ever seen. Yeah. She also didn't use Natsuko's leg as a springboard, but rather her stomach. Kind of, yeah. Gorilla breaks up the pen and stars her in to start another mess. It goes to Jan just wrecking Alex, but she manages to kick out from a wonderful Natsuko spear. Yeah. Natsuko... Oh, wait, that was, it. was this the triple team spear where they... Double through her into the spear? I'll double check. Natsuko is up top and lands the frog splash for the three in 826. Yeah, uh, this one was a good match. It was a little clunky at points, but nothing, again, nothing offensive, nothing terrible, terrible. There was a weird, I I couldn't write, I couldn't call it anything else, but a wedgie plex that I don't understand I that. what I happened. That, yeah. yeah. That was, that uh, was I think weird. that's a mess you were talking about. Yeah, I was like, I don't. It was involved what in that was mess. supposed to happen. I I kind of still think that the jump from the top rope was a little bit strange too. The way that was executed. You talk about that final frog splash. Yeah, it was like you were walking in the air before it landed. It was just no. Kinda... She's talking about something else then. Oh no no you're yeah I don't, that one wasn't that. This was a really good triple tag match. Yeah. And I'm gonna call it here. Alex was the MVP of this match. Yeah yeah. She may not have been the best wrestler in the match, but she was the MVP here. Mm -hmm. She made everybody look good. Yeah. Cut to outside where we're getting ready for our second singles match between Hana and Konami. These two. Even before I took my notes for this match, 
I knew this was going to be the pay per view main event quality. Well, match don't ruin it. No, I, I'm telling you, I knew that. I know, I, I, but going into you're it, going into it, I was foreshadowing. Ready. I was ready. So we shoot outside where we see that it's snowing and there's a bunch of people standing around um, uh, before going back to the door. And we have a door, and then we have Hana knocking on the door, and she starts singing some copyrighted material. <laughs> um, but slightly changed as to not be, or is to be legu- le- legally distinctive. There you go. There, there you we go. go. She says, let's make a snowman. Nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Open the door. Let's make a snowman together. Bobby! Like, I, I get what they're going for, but it, never thought I'd see it in a wrestling program. And then we immediately shoot over to Konami, who says, where it should keep it today, it's my first singles match with Hana, and she likes to use joint holds like I do. Yeah. I'm going to prove that I'm better. I want to win with that technique. My triangle Lancer's winning percentage is 100%. Yeah, this that that kind of built the excitement. Yeah. That's well, for me, because I like watching Konami go... That's why I didn't mind his foreshadowing, because Konami foreshadowed exactly what I know was about what I'm to happen. Saying, just let her foreshadow. He could do it later. Konami does point out that Hana uses joint holds yeah. in her promo. And is that what the torque wrench does or is? They're just different uh, different submissions and stuff are joint moves. I, I, torque wrench just looks painful all around. You don't have the octopus hold, right? Sure. Yeah. The torque Sorry, wrench. the actual name of it. The ground Maneji Katami. The what? Torque wrench. Race car ref had his break, and now it's up to him to sort all of this out. He calls for the bell, and Hana signals to the crowd that she wants attention, and she rightfully gets it. Both ladies start by testing the waters and go into Greco-Roman wrestling. They get a clean break and go straight back into it after a short breather. Konami gets the upper hand by getting Hana in a standing choke and belly-to-back suplexing her, and she then goes straight for the right leg of Hana. Funny fact, as Konami has Hana's leg tied up in the bottom rope, you can see some of the boot fuzz floating in the air in front Mm -hmm. of the camera just yeah yeah that happened a couple times during this match where i'd see the rain goes through the night yeah (laughs) honda tries to fend off konami with kicks and boots but it's with the leg that's already been at konami's focus as honda is running to boot konami while she's in the ropes konami quickly outmaneuvers it and grabs the leg to lay in leg bar number two in the ropes konami breaks it since she's in the ropes and goes for leg bar number five in the ring straight after she gets a bit ahead of herself and underestimates Hana's leg strength as she runs straight into a jumpy dropkick from Hana. But it does a number to Hana as she's still favoring that right leg. Pulling Konami out of the ropes, Hana places her into sitting arm bar number 12. But Konami makes it back to the ropes. But now Hana's focused on that right arm of Konami to try and prevent the triangle lancer from being applied. With Hana limping around on that right leg and Konami struggling to land slaps and elbows with that right arm, both ladies are now looking to find new methods of offense. A couple of drop kicks from Konami, but not enough for the win just yet. Hana ducks out of the corner from a charging Konami, and they go into a short crisscross as Konami lays Hana out with a crossbody kick. As Hana is in the bottom ropes, Konami starts to take advantage of the situation with more kicks that are stiff. Excellent series where Hana ducks a spinning kick from Konami and pulls her leg out from under her to apply arm bar number six on that right arm. Mm-hmm. Konami finally makes it to the ropes, and race car ref has to count it out as Hana's trying to do her best to outdo Konami here. But right after, a big boot to Konami from Hana as Konami is still in the ropes. Konami slips out of a suplex attempt. She goes into a hold, and after letting go of that, she just goes for a sleeper. As race car ref is doing the arm drop on Hana, Hana manages to prevent the third drop and starts to work Konami up into a belly-to-belly suplex. My goodness, the strength as Hana goes straight into the torque wrench and then arm bar number 71. But Konami makes it to the ropes again. Yeah, this is the the Meninji Konami. Okay. As the ladies are charging each other, Konami catches Hana in leg bar number 9 and turns it into a calf crusher on the right leg. Out of the calf crusher and into an ankle lock as Hana is struggling to find the ropes. But Konami's dragging her away at each turn. Strong German suplex from Konami to Hana, followed by a mule kick to Hana's head. But it can't get the three, and Konami is straight into some rolling around as it looked like she's trying to put the triangle lancer on. Yeah. But out of nowhere, Hana is quick with a schoolgirl roll up and gets the three in fourteen oh three. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this match. If you're a fan of wrestling, and I'm saying wrestling like you like wrestling, you should watch this match. You should go out of your way to find it. Um, I like the way that. They both talk, or like the way they talked about and worked the match as if it was going to be like a submission match. 
but then it ended with just a random roll up. Uh, I could watch these two girls wrestle. I could still be watching them wrestle and I'd be okay with it. So, yeah, this, I don't even know what to say about it because this was one of those matches that I, I love watching because this one, the, the only thing that came into my mind was the fact that you barely saw these two leave the ring. If if at all, this, this was very strange for a Hana match too. Yeah, I was gonna say too. I was gonna say that earlier when you pointed out, and we were talking about um, the fact that there were gonna be a lot of joint maneuvers, and it was like we since our timeline, since we've been covering Stardom, Hana's had the kind of the bruiser, yeah, beat people with stuff, kick them in the face. It was really cool to see her go in there and remind people, oh no, she can wrestle. She has a varying style of offense. Yeah, I'll keep it short for right now, but I will tell you that I was very impressed with this match. And if you're here in the U.S., you have an opportunity to see matches just like this. Where? At Mission Pro Wrestling. Matt and I snuck into the last 10-minute mission by Dr. The Wife. Yeah! Where you can see us praise the main event to the last Mission Pro Wrestling Crazy Train event between Thunder Rosa and La Rosa Negra. I'm going to lock the door next time. Both of which are stardom alums. That's true. Go check it out for yourself on Title Match Network and other Mission Pro Wrestling shows where you can also see the Face for Wrestling sponsored Renegade Twins taking part in some amazing wrestling action right here in Texas. So they can watch it online at Title Match Network, watch it in person. Is there anywhere else they can watch stardom quality matches? That's right. You can go to www.stardom-world.com where you can find this and other 5,645 star matches for only 920 yen a month. How many yens? 920. That's Is that a lot of yens? Not a lot of yens. Not a lot of yens. After taking a much needed break of note taking after the last match, we cut over back to where... You took notes? Oh, I just watched and enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> we cut over back to where Oidotai lays out what's coming next between the team of Oidotai, Kigetsu, Hazuki, and Jamie, and QQ of Momo, Azumi, and Utami. See, Matt? I told you we'd see now again. That's true. And also, like... I think Odiatai, like, you know, because they're the usually the weird gimmicks. Yeah. And it looked like they were going to try to be the weird gimmick this time, but TCS beat them to it. Um, but they do try to have a weird gimmick as well. They, we've come to Shikiba, says Kigetsu. Hazuki says it's cold. Kigetsu says, Natsu's not here today. I don't know what to say. Hazuki says, dance. <laughs> Kigetsu says, let's do our best for dancing. Kazuki says, since Natsu isn't here, we can dance with no mistakes. Kigetsu says, Natsu always messes up. I want to do my best. Yamaguchi, do your best. Hazuki, you can do it, Neo Ten. Helpful subtitle guy tells us that San is very polite, whereas Tan and Chan are just cute su suffixes. Um, they all then awkwardly say, yay! Um, as they get ready to go dance. Were there any golf claps? No, just <laughs> just pumping and yays. And Jamie was bottled up the whole time. You could tell she was freezing cold. Uh, and I think yay was the first thing she understood throughout the interview and was just like happy to join in with the yays. We then shoot over to Azumi, who says, It's been a while, but we're back at Shinkiba. I want to beat Hazuki in this preview for our high-speed title match at Kurikurin. There's also the matter of X. And after the match, I'm going to ask Kigetsu about it. Let's go. So I have a question for you. Okay. What's X? X. Nothing. That This is the first mention of it. Right. They did a couple of... I was curious, did you do some research? I did do some research. Okay. X is a mystery wrestler Uh huh. that's supposed to be appearance night. I did see it on their Twitter feed uh. right before um, this show took place. Okay. But it was lightly promoted. Um, there's some stuff behind the scenes that we usually don't get into. Yeah. That just, it happened. But they've been promoting a mystery. That, that's, just, that's all I wanted. Yeah. The fact that they were promoting. Because yeah. I, I had to go back and go, did I watch the right show? Like, yeah. What is X? Oh, no. It's spreading. Utami has rubbed off on Momo, as both ladies said. Absolutely nothing. That's true. But I think that was wise in this case because it was the whole Azumi, which some others we'll get into it later. Yeah, but we 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 it, it needed to be Azumi. Old ref is out to try to keep this all sorted out. Good luck to you, sir. Did you notice two fun things? What's that? One, Kigetsu once again showed her love for Starbucks as she wore one of those like I know right coffee cup yeah 
non warmer. What do you what do you call it? The cardboard it? that goes around the, the cup. Thing. She wore it out like a wristband. And yeah, like my like wristband. Like Mayu yeah. <laughs> and then when they were doing the streamers, she attempted to do the Mayu streamer spin. Yeah, but nobody threw streamers, so she got all sad and dejected and like it was it was just great. It was great. Can get to a new Tommy. Start off and both ladies show that they don't trust each other. Well, one's an Oedo tie and the other one is a mute. But Kengetsu quickly gets to business in overpowering a Tommy. And up to this point, we haven't really seen anyone else do that as Stardom has been working on the strength persona of Utami. Yeah. Both ladies tag out and we're met with a proper high speed display, as Azumi predicted, as it's her and Hazuki in the ring right now. And I just can't keep up with it in my notes. Both <laughs> ladies have an answer for everything. And Izumi gets a little bit of an upper hand here. But her bragging gets the best of her as it allows the rest of Oidotai to take over and cause a mess on the outside. Mm -hmm. You can tell that Old Ref wants nothing to do with this as he stays in the ring. Nothing My favorite do. part of the outside was when Kid gets used an umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason it was my favorite part is... Because hopefully we're not going to see a Photoshop of Kegetsu as evil Mary Poppins. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> and if he's really good, we're going to get Kegetsu as Yondu as Mary Poppins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of, instead of the... Uh, That's why this episode is late, by the way. <laughs> so instead of the arrow, is it going to be the water bending? Yeah. Yeah, crap. <laughs> it's gonna you be walked old. into that one. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Matt. It doesn't last long as Azumi is rolled back inside for Azuki to start working the crowd into a stomp count and a finish up with a boot to the face of Azumi in the bottom ropes. A quick take around with Oedota, and they are all taking turns on beating up Azumi. And Old Ref is using a fair amount of English while Colin officiating this match. Mm -hmm. Is he? Kagitsu takes her time with taunting Azumi as she tries to mount a comeback and get to her feet. But Kagitsu stomps her down and just roughs houses her, her over to the Oedota corner. Mm hmm. Mizuki is back in, and she is on board with the taunting as well. Oedotai clears out the QQ from the corner, and Kegetsu has Azumi in a headlock with her feet on the ropes for Hazuki to come flying in from the apron over the top to land a stomp on her stomach. Yeah, I just want to point out that, like, I already liked Hazuki before we started doing these reviews. The more and more we do these reviews, the more and more Hazuki is, like, becoming legitimately my favorite wrestler of all yeah. time. And the tag team of Hazuki and Kegetsu are moving up into one of my favorite tag teams of all time. Being humbailed in the middle of the ring, Old Ref seems to be fed up with Azuki and the rest of Oidotai. Azumi ducks a lariat from Kegetsu and after being Irish whipped into the ropes and reverse her Karanas Kegetsu down to the mat and follows with a flying drop kick. Not reverse, but she caught her on the side, and I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that before. I'm glad you brought this up because this was very unique. It looked like she was maybe going to do like an arm bar, but somehow yeah. still rode it into her. Like, it was really good. And she quickly tags in Utami, who shoulder tackles Oidotai and overcomes a double team effort by Hazuki and Kegetsu. Mm -hmm. She then uses Kegetsu to knock everyone down and finishes that with throwing Kegetsu on top of Jamie. Mm -hmm. Like, normally what you see in a ladder match. Yeah. <laughs> Momo comes in for a slight bit to help Utami, but it's quickly back to Utami and Kegetsu as they go to trading elbows in the middle of the ring. As Kegetsu tries to get the upper hand, Utami judo throws her down and gets a tag into Momo. Kegetsu quickly gets out of the ring and Jamie is in to try and stop Momo from running wild. She doesn't. <laughs> and Momo is tearing Jamie apart until Jamie suplexes Momo into the corner. This is actually well done, too. We brought up a couple times how Jamie seems to be the one who's, like, taken to the Japanese thing more than anybody else. Yeah. And her ability to step in with these, these six competitors and go just as hard and be just as Five. good. You know what I mean. There's six. Now it's on the ringside. Anyways. The fact that she's able to step in there with this this amount of good talent and be show that she's just as talented, just as yeah, like superb. You can definitely see why Jamie and Bobby both are at the top of their game right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna say, is there six or are there seven? <laughs> oh, I know where you're talking about. Yeah, I, I get what you're laying out here. We'll we'll, we'll cover that in a minute. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It was a great moment for me as Jamie was running off the ropes and Momo picks her up to set her up for a bee driver. And Jamie rolls it over into a pen attempt. Yeah. Doesn't get the three, but it does get a set of Momo running knees. Yeah. <laughs> as Suzuki is running in to break up the choke Momo has applied to Jamie, you could still see that some of that boot fuzz I was telling you about earlier. Still floating around. 
I was also chuckling at how Tommy came in to stop Hazuki and they just stiff each other out of the ring. I don't have a plan. I'm just going to like no. beat the crap out of you. Yeah, that eventual showdown is going to be great. Jamie hits a nice running knee to Momo and gets quickly aggravated that she can't get the pin. Was this like the little uppercut knee that she does? I think so. Yeah, no, that was so good. Momo retorts with kicks. Yeah. Jamie counters with a German suplex. Momo replies with a kick to the replies. head. Replies. <laughs> messages. And now both ladies are down. Jamie makes the first tag after stopping Momo from making hers, and she manages to hold off Hazuki enough for a tag to Azumi, who does sorcery with her submission hold on Hazuki. Hazuki manages to get out of it, but the two ladies go to trade elbows, and I think Hazuki has the upper hand here. Mm hmm more witchcraft into the trade of rolling pins, and I really don't understand or can describe what all happened in just 15 seconds of match time here. Wrestling. I just know that Hazuki was placed in armbar number 43 by Azumi, and she made it to the ropes for a break. Yep. Azumi signals that she's going up top in the corner to fly back to Hazuki, but Kagetsu meets her with a mist. Hazuki is right behind to meet a dazed Azumi in the corner and gets her up in the middle of the ring to put on the Hazuki crossface. But even as Azumi made it to the ropes, Hazuki places her back in it. Yeah, right this was such a cool combo. So you had the full Nelson into a backbreaker, into the crossface, into a backstabber, back into another crossface. It was such a good sequence of moves. Right when Azumi looked to be tapping, Momo breaks it up and is followed by Oidota. Get this. I researched the move here. Okay. Kagetsu lands Azumi out flat for Hazuki to fly in with the atomic bombs away. Atomic bombs. You make this sound like it's a plane just dropping bombs here. That's the actual name of it. But I knew this had a name and yeah. I could, we could not figure it out to save our lives. Yeah. At 2 and 99 one hundreds, Momo seemingly knocks out Azuki with a kick to the head and QQ run all over her. Yeah. But Azumi can't put it away. Azumi spider climbs to the top for a crossbody splash to Azuki for a breakup from Oedota at two and a half. As Azuki was trying to tilt the world Azumi, some physics happened and Azumi ends up with the win at 17.04. I don't know what happened the here. Azumi Sushi? Yeah, it, sure. Even though you got out of this match what you were expecting going into it. Oido Tai and QQ still put on a hell of a show for everyone. So does that so with all that being said there, let's answer the question. Are there six or are there seven? I'm glad you brought this up because originally it started off with six in the ring, and then old ref started getting involved. Yeah. I gotta hand it to him. He normally restrains himself, but this one he actually it didn't overpower the match though. But it really got up, got to Jamie though. Yeah. She was upset. There was though a couple times where he was just like like, they, they push him to it. Like, I remember there was a rope break. Yeah. Where, like, Jamie had to reach in and, like, pull Hazuki, I think it was, to the rope. And, like, you could tell, like, old ref was just like, come on, man. You're cheating right in front of me. I, I think out of everything that this match did, mm -hmm. it highlighted the upcoming high-speed title match between Hazuki and Hazumi. And I think out of everything that happened, that was the winner coming out of this match was that we have this high-speed match coming up. Yeah, no, I can't wait for that one. And with QQ getting to close the show, we wrap everything up here. But wait, there's more. So Azumi gets on the mic and says, I just pinned the champion. Hazuki, I said I'd beat you at the press conference. Yesterday on Samurai TV, you said if Azumi loses, she should be an audio tie. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Well, okay. Hazuki, let's have a clean fight. She then sticks out her hand, but immediately pulls it back, not actually giving Hazuki a chance to even consider shaking the hand. And says, yeah, whatever. Kegetsu, hurry up and tell everyone who X is. Even my own team suspects that I'm X. Who's that? Out comes a mysterious person wearing paper on their face. <laughs> and a jacket that says Jogo Kyoto. Was it the paper in the shape of the Scream Master? Nah, a kind of ish. Oh, yeah. Geez. And a jacket that says Jungle Kiona. I'm not sure who this person could be. <laughs> but she lowers the, the mask or lowers the paper down to say... It was yep, me all that's along. Right. I'm not X. I need to Photoshop jungle from the Vince thing. It was me, Austin. It doesn't work, though, because she says she's not X. Oh. She says it wasn't me all along because there is no X. Never was, never will be. Kegetsu is all talk. Kegetsu just shoots her mouth off. She then go violently gives uh, Kegetsu the microphone, who says, shut up. You're so damn annoying. You're so stupid. Huh? Step up to the plate. 
If you want it so bad, I'll bring out X right now. We then get a really cool theme song. It was like a remix of the Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And out comes a person wearing a scream mask. Mm-hmm. As that person attempts to get into the ring, Jan attempts to attack them. Kigetsu breaks it up. The masked person goes to the top turnbuckle and comes off with a double drop kick for both members of Jan. Kigetsu says, this is X. If you want to find out who it's going to be, come to Quirk U and Hall. Do decent little setup. Caesar. Yeah, yeah, they did a lot of foreshadowing, promoting. I don't know if that was no. foreshadowing as much as it was a really good teaser. Yeah, yeah. good promotion. Teaser. Yeah. That, that's good. But they, they know how to properly continue the storyline, mm-hmm. keep everybody involved, and also promote what's coming up. Yeah. Um, Azumi then gets back on the mic as Odio Tai leaves and says, I told you I'm not X. Who thought it would be me? Utami and Momo both raise their hands. <laughs> so Azumi shoots them stairs. They say, she says, today Azumi pinned the champion for three. I pinned Azuki for three. Core Q and Hall will be the same result. Since I won, I'll close the show out and we get the QQ ending, which was a pretty good ending for a pretty good show. Um, I like the show. How mm-hmm. about you guys? I did too. Um, well, like I said, I, well, like I mentioned to Waldo a little bit ago, uh, I enjoyed the beginning of the, um, the the card, but I think my full attention had to be on the last two matches. Mm. And because it did, like a good essay, it had a great intro, and it built up to the climax, and then when you got those matches toward the end, it really, you know, yeah. that's a roller coaster ride down the finisher. Well, that leads to a really tough question. Okay. okay. What was your match of the night? I don't know. Mine is a tie, and this is probably an upset. No ties. No, no ties. No, no ties. Uh, not fair. No, no One ties. match of the night. No, I mean, I like them both because I got to see Hana and Konami do a really serious, focused match. Uh-huh. And I'm not saying that their matches aren't focused and serious when they do other matches, but this one, you kind of saw how deep and, and calculating each one of them were. You right. know? And then the last one... Um, same. It was it was fun to watch. Um, as always, Odio Tai is always putting on a good match. Um, mm-hmm. Not really a, not really a huge stars or QQ fan. Um, mm-hmm. They're okay, you know. I guess my match of the night was probably gonna go with what you said. Probably the Hana match. Yeah. 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 To me, it was very tough. I, I I that's why I said you couldn't have. Um, not fair. A tie because I knew it was gonna come Boop. down to Odio Tai and QQ versus Hana and uh konami i'm going to go with hana and konami um like i said if if you are a fan of wrestling you should check this match out um no and that's no res- disrespect to qq and odiotai i think that was also it was phenomenal it set up stuff it did so much stuff that was great but just to get to see hana and konami go at it and it was their first meeting even too is what she said yeah the first singles match like come on Crack my knuckles here. Oh boy, here we go. Match not for me is Saki. Hell no. <laughs> Always Saki. I think our first three way tie. No, no. no ties. No ties. No, I'm talking about for all three of us agreeing on the same. Oh. oh. Hands down, Hana and Konami. Yeah. And I wouldn't say hands down, but. Okay. Hand, no, for me. Gotcha. Personally, for me, this is by far match of the night. Mm hmm. And I already had a feeling that this was going to be the case when I saw that this was on the card. These amazing ladies did not disappoint. To say that this match exceeded my expectations would be an understatement. Konami proved yet again why she's amazing. Hell, you can even see Japanese Jack Tunney look on in amazement. Now, I know it's hard to decipher his expressions. We here at Face Wrestling have cracked the code. (laughs) And Hana proved for for the first time in our timeline that she is versatile enough to go toe-to-toe in any match Along the lines of like Konami without having to resort to going outside or causing a distraction. Mm. To me, Hana shows here why she will always be in my top five list of all time favorite wrestlers. And if you're wondering, I do mean all time with that list being no particular order. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hana, Mayu, Taker, Flair, and Sting. That's a, that's a high list. All share in the number one slot. Really? I'm going to call it here and say this is my favorite match up to this point in our timeline. That's strong. I my memory is not what it used to be. You've slept but I do a remember <laughs> about three shows ago, the greatest match we'd ever seen. I got you, but for me, this is it. 
Up remember to this. Remember this. Up to this, this day. I know, but up he's to saying this, up to this point. Up to this point in our timeline, top match. Better than Momo and Azuki. Top match. Wow. Okay. Moving forward, the bar has been set extremely high by Hana and Konami. Hanami. I everybody's entitled to their thing. I wouldn't. I'm not dissing it. If you disagree with me, comment below. Comment below. I agreed. So from there, we'll go into Hill of the Night. If you want to go ahead and give us your Hill of the Night. I I, I don't know if I even had one. I well, yeah, I do. I do. Okay. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. So my, might as well give it to, to Rev. Yeah, might as well. Oh, Rev? Yeah, because I was going to actually give it to um, Kagetsu for the umbrella. But we're going to give that one to Old Rev. <laughs> we gonna Congratulations, give it to Old Rev. You made it. You made it Hill of the Night. Um, I think I'm once again. I think I've done it a couple times. I got to I got to throw it out to uh, Kaori again. She beat up race car ref on his birthday, and we didn't oh, mention this during true, the match. Can we point out the fact also that while she was stomping him in the corner, he was still counting her down to let her know. <laughs> Such a professional. But Kaori is. Good <laughs> Did he to... ever miss a count? No, he <laughs> he took a second because he was getting hit to get hit, and then was just like, "Oh yeah, count her out." <laughs> uh, so Waldo, who is your hill of the night my hill of the night would have to be Saki she yet again showed us what it takes to hide for most of a match and have other wrestlers do the heavy lifting while she claims victory at the end of the day I, mean, I see through your mask you're wearing Saki I mean at least she wasn't hiding in another country like some people well I'm Waldo and that's it for me I'm the Matt I'm Dr. The Wife be sure to catch us on all the usual places within social media at Face Wrestling on the Twitter and Facebook. Also, at Dr. The Wife now. Share, share, share. And we never remember to say this. Make sure and like and subscribe. Yeah. I say that here in a second. Oh. Well, you didn't say it before. <laughs> well, we, we beat you to I it. I wasn't wrong. You hadn't said it before. And if you're so inclined, do a little ting on that bell so you get some updates and notifications when we put up some shorts. Leave a comment things. below and let us know how we're um, doing. You can catch the audio episode of this episode on SoundCloud and the iTunes. Don't forget to stutter kick the subscribe button here on the YouTube. And the bell. And like. Okay. okay. And also check out www.startup-world.com where you can get some amazing wrestling action for only 920 yen a month. How many yen? 920. That's a lot, a lot of yen. yen. <laughs> Not a lot of yen. <laughs> I'm Waldo. I'm Matt. I'm Dr. The White. Don't forget everyone is different and everyone is good. <laughs>